So what you're looking at here is a training board that I made myself. We use this in the shop to train some of the newer guys once in a while. And what I'm gonna to do today is I'm gonna run you guys through diagnosing a central air conditioning system that's not working properly. So let's begin with sequence here on the whiteboard. Here is our sequence of a cooling system uh, from beginning to end. These are all the steps. It's only about 12 steps. This is very good to keep on your phone if you're new and you're starting to diagnose systems because this is the sequence we're gonna use to diagnose and find a problem wherever it may be. Now I'm gonna run you through this whole sequence on the board. Now beginning our sequence is a breaker, right? This is usually gonna be a 15 or 20 amp tube hole breaker. Um, in my case here, I just have a cord hooked up to supply power to the board, so that simulates our breaker. From the breaker, it's gonna go to a switch right on the outside of the air handler itself. Now, it's not always gonna be a red burner switch. Sometimes it's just gonna look like a regular light switch, but this is the power on and off to our air handler. From there, it's gonna go to the primary side of our transformer. So we're gonna have 240 volts coming in the transformer, and it's gonna go down to 24 volts on the secondary side of our transformer. From there, it's gonna go through a fuse. This is gonna be a three or a five amp fuse, and most often it's located right on the control board. Once that 24 volts goes through the fuse, it's gonna to come to the R terminal on our control board. Now from here, it usually goes straight to the R terminal on our thermostat, but a lot of systems are going to have a float switch worked in between there. So basically what's happening here is a 24 volts, it's gonna come off the R terminal on our control board, it will go in one wire into a float switch, go through the flow switch, that 24 volts is gonna come out the other wire of the flow switch, and then it will travel down the red wire to the R terminal in our thermostat. Now in cooling mode, the thermostat is going to make connections between the R terminal, send 24 volts to our Y terminal. It will also send 24 volts from R to G. So the Y and G, this is for cooling, this is for our blower motor. So these, both of these terminals are gonna get powered at the same time in a cooling mode. From here, the Y is gonna go usually on a yellow wire, going back to our control board Y terminal. And the G, which is usually gonna be a green wire, is going to also travel back to the control board on the G terminal. Now, not every system is going to have a printed circuit board with a Y terminal on it. Sometimes you might have a fan relay board that doesn't have a Y terminal. But either way, um, the 24 volts that's coming from the Y terminal on your thermostat is going to either connect to the Y terminal control board if you have a printed circuit board, or if you have a fan relay board, it's just going to connect to another wire that eventually goes out to the contactor on our outdoor unit to turn that on. But either way, if you have a control board, you will usually see a yellow wire from your thermostat and normally a red wire that's going to be a separate thermostat wire that travels along with your copper line set to the contactor outside. So you can see we have our red wire here. So what this is doing is taking this signal, the Y signal from our thermostat to our control board, it's taking that same 24 volts and it's sending it to our contactor. 24 volts can go through the contactor, contactor will be pushed in and the circuit will be completed as a common wire and that's what we use the white wire for. We use that as a common, coming back to the common on the control board. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn the power on. And you can see, this is our system right now. It's in the off position. We have power on the secondary side of a transformer. We have power going through our fuse. We have power on the R terminal. The power is going through the flow switch and it's ending on the R terminal on our thermostat. So we're already more than halfway through our sequence just getting power up to the R terminal on our thermostat. And a lot of problems are going to arise in between those places. So this is why a technician, you often find them going straight to the thermostat. They want to put the thermostat in cooling mode. They wanna make sure the system is in a state where it should be operating. And then we wanna see what the system is actually doing from there. So for example, if I were to walk up and I were to put this into cooling mode and absolutely nothing's happening, 
I might check and see if I have power on that R terminal. If I don't, then I know the problem is somewhere in the sequence prior to this point. So here's an example. I have power off my transformer. I got power going through my fuse. I have power going to my R terminal, but I don't have power on the R terminal my thermostat. If you look at your sequence, what's in between the R terminal control board and the R terminal in your thermostat? It's the float switch. So you can see I kind of rigged it to lift the float switch here. So basically what that means is that we have a drainage problem. We have a clogged drain line, a filled up drain pan, uh, so that we just need to clean that line out. And once we do, the float switch goes back down and power is restored to our terminal. Now, if we do have power at the R terminal and nothing is happening at all, then we know the problem is somewhere after this in our sequence. So I'll simulate that problem right now. I'll put the thermostat in cooling mode. And you can see here, we have power going from our R terminal to our Y and G. So we have those terminals are lit up. We have 24 volts there. As you see, we have power coming back to Y and G terminals on our control board. So that means we have 24 volts to the Y terminal. We got 24 volts making it to the G terminal. We can see our blower motor is on. So we know it's working up to this point. So the problem's gotta be somewhere downstream. So if we know we have 24 volts here heading out to our contactor, let's look over at our contactor. We have our 24 volts coming from that Y wire that's from our thermostat to the Y control board. And we have that 24 volts going into one side of the contactor, coming out the other and going back to up. Look at that. The common's not complete, right? So we had a bad wire. Maybe, a, you know, you never know. Maybe a landscaper came along with his weed whacker and cut the wire or something like that. So simply fixing that. You can see our outdoor unit now turns on because our contactor's pulled in. So using that sequence can tell you where in the system the problem really is so that you can start narrowing in and working on it. All right, so the system's off. I'm gonna turn it back on. We're gonna simulate another problem. All right, so you can see nothing's happening at all, but I do still have power on the secondary side of my transformer. So what this means is if we look at our sequence, our breaker is on, our switch is on, our transformer is good, we have 24 volts. Where does it go next? It goes to the fuse. Now I pulled it out um, just to simulate a blown fuse. So what that means is that we have a short in the system somewhere. So now we know what our problem is and we just need to find that short. All right, so let's do another one. We'll turn the power back on. And as you can see, my thermostat is in cooling mode and my blower is coming on, but my outdoor unit is not. So if we look at the sequence, we know we have power coming up to our R terminal. Um, we know this because our blower is running. So we know we have power from R to G. We got power from G up to G on our control board and our blower is turning on. But you can see we don't have power here between R and Y. So if I were to take a jumper and go from R to Y here, you could see my whole system lights up. I now have power on the Y terminal, the thermostat, Y on the control board, my outdoor unit's turning on. So what this means is that the switch between R and Y and my thermostat is bad, and it's time for me to get a new thermostat. So the whole goal here is to understand the sequence well enough to try to find out where the system is actually stopping along this sequence. And once you find that point where you're not getting power or something's not functioning when it should be, now you know where to start looking for your problem.